Good day, grade 11s, and welcome to your term four modules. Um, for this term, it's 1.6. In the theory, it is uh, 2.4, then 7.3, and then 8.1 and 8.2, but the last three we don't really worry with. So in this one, we're looking at module 2.4, managing email. So let's see what they want to discuss with us today. We're looking at email access. Now, most of us are very familiar with email. So email access, searching your email, flagging emails, things like that. So let's jump in. When we talk about email access, we're looking at creating an email account. Now, most of you have, you know, some sort of whether it's Gmail, Yahoo, anything like that. Um, but they go through this process. So you need to then register a web-based. Now, again, what is this? What does this mean? Web-based. Is it installed on your computer? No means that in order to access this, you've got to be connected to the internet. So register a web-based email address at Gmail. Then they bring in capture. Now, I'm, sh I'm sure you, you guys have seen this before. Okay. This is what it stands for. But let me just quickly get an example of capture for you. So that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Because when you see it, you'll know what I'm referring to. It's this, right? You've seen these before, okay? So that is your capture. Now, what's the purpose? Well, just look at the name. Completely automated public Turing test. So it's a test for the public to tell computers apart from humans, okay? To see whether it is a human or whether it's just some bot trying to get through. Now, they mention here to us that captures usually take the form of distorted letters, which is exactly what I just showed you. Okay, let me bring it up again. Usually takes the form of distorted letters and words that no computer software can recognize, but which humans can recognize with ease. So that's why they end up doing this. Now, they do it because obviously there's a lot of spam out there. And guys, you know the emails that you are getting. Computer programs can search for websites, these bots, and try to join mailing lists or sign up to blogs to harvest or to get hold of email addresses we know there's, there's some people out there that are not very nice right and then websites use tests to make sure that you are human before allowing you to join up so we've got that we've got our email we're up and running now searching your email a good search is the quickest and easiest way to find any email you're looking for now just to give you an example um i'm sitting here with just look at that 11,000 emails <laughs> here at school. So do you think I'm going to use a search option? Of course I'm going to, right? I can go and search, and there's a search bar on top, and then I can go and look through my uh, emails there, okay? If I want to find a particular person's email, things like that. Now, you can search on multiple criteria. I can click on my inbox and do a particular search there. I can click, like, for example, here, I'm not going to show you my emails, obviously. <laughs> so there, you see, I've got search email. I can click on that. I can type in a particular person's email. And there you can see it'll bring up people's email addresses. Maybe there's a topic that I was looking for, something that I made a note on. But there they show us we've got all these different folders here. And we can then go and do a search based on that. Now you can do a more refined search, right? That's also fine. They're just showing you that we have these options. We can also sort out our emails. Now our email messages in Gmail cannot as yet be sorted. Some other platforms do allow you to do that. Um, an emailing reading app such as Outlook. Now just remember the difference with Outlook. Outlook is installed on your computer. So is this web-based? No. This is ISP based. You are installing this onto your computer and your emails get downloaded onto that PC. Okay, there you can see from there, we can then run sorting, filtering. We can do everything we want to in Outlook. And many businesses run with that. Then flagging email messages. Now, what does that mean? When we are flagging, we can do things like adding stars. That's indicating that maybe it's a it's something that we we want to look at that we maybe just don't have the time now 
but we're going to add a star to it. So when we do look at our email later on, we can actually see, ah, okay, wait, um, I need to attend to this particular email. And there you can see there's some examples. And yeah, you can obviously choose which ones. And they just show you where. Folks, you're not going to get tested on like this to ask where do you go into. No, no, no. Right? It's about knowing what this does. You can mark emails as important. And here you can see this one has been marked as important. And they tell us the tag to the right of the star can be ticked to indicate the message is important. So this one not so important, that one <laughs> important. Okay. Then grouping messages into folders. Here's another one. You can create what we call labels. Um, in Outlook, it will be folders that we have. And here they tell us a label in Gmail is an organizational tool. So in other words, this one goes into the Botswana trip. Now, do you think that helps us? Yes, it does. Why? Because when I go into that folder or that particular label, then what is going to happen? If I click on that, all the emails related to that trip is going to be there. Do you think it's going to make it easier for me to find that? Of course it is. Okay, so each label name acts as a folder. So like I said, don't get confused over the fact that it says a label. It is still a folder, and this is what they are telling us. Um, and emails get listed according to that. Now, an email can have more than one label, they tell us as well. And deleting a label will not delete the message. So let's just be clear on that. Right, then they go through how to assign a label, and you'll obviously have to go and do that yourself. Um, go through that process, go and practice that, but just know what these things mean. Then we can also automate with filters and rules. Okay, they tell us that some emails you might want to uh, be deleted without reading them or move them directly to a relevant folder. Maybe you find that somebody's sending you an email and you don't even want to open that email, you just want to move it. Okay, so we're going to set up our search, we create a filter with the search option and then we'll get a dialog box that will specify what to do with the messages matching that search criteria. And you can see we have a number of options here. Then there are contact groups. Now obviously you're going to be saving people's email addresses, so you're going to save them as contacts. And you can have contacts or contact groups. Here we communicate with a specific group of people on a regular basis. So that's why you create the group. Like you don't create a group if you're only sending the person an email once every six months. No. So we create a contact group or a distribution list. Okay. This is a list of email addresses with a certain name. And there you can see, here's one. As we go PA, it brings up the parents group. So that will be a group where all the parents, whoever they are, all the email addresses will be in there. So when I send to this group, this contact group, it will send an email to everyone within that group. It just makes it easier. Okay, and that's it for module 2.4. I will say this to you, I think the main thing here, um, when it comes to managing email, is the difference between ISP-based email, web-based email, giving examples, looking at um, what labels are, um, flagging, also then how the different email platforms work, your ISP based and your web based, um, and just knowing the basics around it, the CC, the BCC, you know, that type of thing. But that's it for module 2.4.